to our eighth video on uh, different methods on how to garden, uh, presented by the Richmond Garden Club uh, for Richmond Public Library. Um, the last video we did was we were actually in somebody's vegetable garden, uh, one of our garden club members who integrated in amongst her vegetables flower or flowers. And a lot of those, most of those flowers were pollinator plants. So today we're at another of our members' uh, beautiful gardens, Gail Stoltz and her husband Ken. And we're not going to talk about vegetables in amongst your flowers. We're going to talk about art in your garden. So right now I'm standing by, uh, uh, it looks like an old uh, wrought iron bench. You see a chandelier, an old trellis, and somewhere in there is a chair. So we're going to um, uh, go on a discovery of how you can add really interesting pieces called hardscaping into your garden. And I'd like to introduce Gail Stoltz. Hi, I'm Gail Stoltz and I've lived in Richmond all my life. And I've lived on this property for 41 years and it's been heaven here. This is what we call the cutting edge memorial. And we call it so because the cross cut saw on the top is or was my father's saw from eons ago and this large saw blade here was from my brother's farm or mill in Terrace, BC. He built his own log house there and he cut logs and when he stopped that, we went to visit one time and, and he offered me this big beautiful saw blade and I brought it back from Terrace and since my brother has passed on so we have had some other saw blades and other cutting implements. So we call this our cutting edge memorial to memorial to my dad and my brother past. This is a very special plant in my garden because it was given to me by one of our members, Friedel Whiting. And it has the most beautiful leaf after flowering. It just has these gorgeous blended leaves. It's called a blood root and it has a white flower in the spring and it just has a beautiful habit and it loves it here it's doubled and tripled in size a very special double blood root when we removed the hedge that was here as as big as that one there i wanted some other kind of fencing so but i told Ken, my husband, that I wanted a piece of art, not just a fence. And he went online and found this glass wall, this etched glass wall, that we were told came from Expo 76. It was in a pavilion there. When they took Expo down, they moved it to a building in Vancouver somewhere. And then it came to me. I. <laughs> I just love it, it's splendid. We have to be careful not to be breaking it, but it's a lovely feature in my garden. a granite, solid granite bowl. It weighs about 400 pounds and it was on my father's property for years and years and when I moved from there I took it with me. Um, it ha it's so heavy that my husband Ken put a, we found a old fiberglass shower tray to, for it to sit on because it has to circulate the water. There's a 55 gallon drum buried in the ground behind it to circulate the water and keep the water flow up. And 
it it has a beautiful relief on it in the front and uh, somebody I know took a, took a rubbing of the relief so that we could see it I could show it to people it's right here but it, the light the Sun has to be just in the right direction for you to see it but when it is in the right direction it's quite prominent and I had someone interpret it for me it's in Japanese characters and it is it's a trademark for a pottery factory there's a telephone number on it and it's Osaka uh, I we assume or I assume that it may have been an advertisement for a pottery factory in Osaka Japan at one time how my father got it I don't know but it is such a special piece and uh, Ken made this lovely, I used to grow a plant out of it, but Ken made this lovely fountain out of it. And the birds, of course, love it. They are attracted to it all day long. They sit on it, they bathe on it. The uh, hummingbirds um, sit on the top of the spurt and bathe and drink and just have a wonderful time. It's standing room only sometimes around this fountain. and. I said to Ken, we need to have a bar across so that the birds can get a little deeper bath. So we made, we made this little bent piece of metal and just put it across like that so the bigger birds can hop onto that piece of metal and be a little deeper in the water and have a splendid bath and they do that all day long. We love our fountain. It's our entertainment. We have all our meals in the sunroom overlooking this fountain, and we enjoy it so much. These are some of my collections of our travels around California, Arizona, the different places we've been in the wintertime and other collections like my uh, washboards and old tobacco, tin cans. And this is a very special one that I found in Key West, Florida, when Ken and I spent a winter there once, year 2000. Isn't it beautiful? And these are just rocks from, from the different areas that uh, we like to explore in the wintertime. We winter in the south in the all right this was found in the desert also i believe it's a skull of a little goat isn't it wonderful and this is the branch of a choya cactus when they've deteriorated and shells from the sea key west and so on over here found this out back in the back 40 somewhere and different collections of dried interesting pod seeds this is another wonderful find from the desert it's called a boot and it is from a saguaro cactus when the when a bird pecks its way, makes a little home into the, into the sh uh, arm of the saguaro cactus. The saguaro cactus might live beyond a hundred years. When it dies and decomposes into the ground and is all gone, this scar or scab from the bird pecking and making its nest in there is left. And it is very solid like a, like a, scab and it lasts for years and years and years and I was lucky enough to find one in the desert. I just love my boot. This is my uh, wheelbarrow port and my potting table and this is a milk can from the number two road farm where my dad had a little dairy farm and we used to put our milk cans 
out on the road to be collected. These are post hole diggers from my father's farm and an old bicycle pump. And this is a plaque. It reads in loving memory of mom and dad, Nick and Julia Cozier, farming pioneers of Lulu Island from Jean, Len and Gail. This is called our fish bench and it was made by a young man who built our pavilion roof. Very talented young man. Uh, he used to do collecting wood and logs on the riverbank and then produce some little work of art like this. And these clumps of regurgitation are from large and small herons that roost in our pine trees just above here and they would regurgitate their dinner and so I collected them just for fun. These are a collection of Devil's Claw which is from the desert probably in Arizona on my hiking. Happened to come across these dried Pods. They're dried seed pods, and I brought them all back with me. And I happen to see in a museum or somewhere how they were put together to form different shapes. The balls and the onion looking like concoction. But they are desert flowers, devil's claw empty seed pods. Another candelabra that I found at a garage sale, of course, and my husband put solar lights in it so it lights up at night. It just twinkles in the dark. This is one of my favorite pieces in the garden. It's actually an aluminum beer keg with a wooden bung right here. And when it's struck with this wooden gong, it gives a beautiful tone. B sharp, I'm told. It's a sound therapy treatment. Well, that was lovely. We have finished up in this garden. I now feel like going off to have a nap somewhere <laughs> in the garden. And we learned today all about how you can use pieces that you collect, that you love, and display them in amongst all your flowers. Thank you very much, Gail. My pleasure. We'll see you again. Mm -hmm.